Hey guys, this is Gaurav Sharma and today we're going to be talking about how Cisco Duo helps securing the workforce identity and access under the Cisco Zero Trust architecture. In the previous video, we did talk about Cisco Zero Trust a little, right? And how Cisco Zero Trust is divided into three categories, workforce, workload, and workplace. Today in this video, we're going to be talking about securing your workforce. What does it mean? How do we secure a workforce? We have further divided the securing workforce piece into three, three categories, right? So workforce means securing the users, but what does that mean, right? Are we talking about you securing the access? Are we talking about securing their identity or are we uh, looking into protecting their assets as well, right? So the answer is, everything right if we when we talk about securing workforce that that should include everything right how they're accessing stuff making sure um, their identity is safe making sure the applications they're accessing that's safe and also the device that they're using are also not compromised right so how do we do that uh, today we're going to be looking at duo and see how it's going to protect the identity and access of the users. All right, so let's jump into the dashboard of it. I've got it right here on the on this screen. You see uh, Duo's dashboard where um, you see a bunch of data in here, the users coming in, um, the authentication logs, and so, so now let's take a look at the device inside. So what essentially uh, Cisco Duo is doing is it's ensuring that the users are able to connect securely and they are making sure that from an administrative perspective, they're making sure only the right people access the right resources or applications so how do we ensure that uh, is what we're going to look at and here just to kind of give you guys an idea of like what a user end user experience would look like uh with with the uh, with the two-factor authentication once you get authenticate right and you want to access a uh, Say for example, Outlook, right? How do we do that? Let's just take a look at this quick uh, demo. We just click on it, uh, put a username and password on it, click on sign in. Now, what this is gonna do is Duo is gonna push, uh, send a notification to, and, and ask you to authenticate using your phone or a passcode or whatever method that you choose, right? So you're going to click on send me a push. You're going to get a push on your phone. You're going to click on it and you're going to approve where it's basically saying there's a login request and uh, someone's trying to, uh, we're trying to access um, Outlook list from this location. That's the user supposedly, I mean, hoping that this is you that's trying to authenticate. It gives you kind of an overview of like, when you just, just by clicking on um, push notification, do has already grab all this information and presenting it to you. And that's when you're gonna just click on approve. Once that's approved, you are now able to access your Outlook. So, Talking about securing the access and securing the identity, what what happens if someone steals your laptop and they try to access uh, your company resources? If you had Duo configured, then you wouldn't they wouldn't be able to get anywhere because these, these as you can see the the applications are protected, and for them to get into it they will have to go through this process, which means that it's going to send a notification push to your phone. So even if your laptop is gone, 
you're going to see, okay, uh, if someone's trying to get in and they, they click on push notification and you get an access request and you know it's not you doing it, you can very well go ahead and deny that and the, uh, and the, and the bad guys, whoever stolen the laptop, wouldn't be able to get into the resources. But that's how you're protecting your resources. Now, we go back to the, dem uh, the dashboard here. When we look at the policy, you can, you can get really granular into what kind of devices are coming to your network, and you can set policies for those as well, right? So I'm gonna click on a policies here. And I'm going to click on edit policy. So once, you, and you can apply this policy to the users. And, and you, when you click on it, it kind of shows you the things that you can do uh, for the users that are coming in. So as you can see here, um, if the devices are not uh, enrolled, the users are not enrolled uh, with Duo, you, you're going to do you know, deny access to them. You have an authentication policy where you're enforcing two-factor authentication. So uh, think of it like if you have an SSO in your company, uh, once you put in your username and password, but you want a second, uh, your second factor authentication, that could be Duo. And that would basically prompt you to send that push that we just saw. And once you have that, uh, once you trust that, approve that, that's how you get it, right? And you can do user location setting as well. So uh, you only want Canada and US coming into your environment, you could do that, right? The rest of every country, uh, you wanna put deny action to it, specify that. Uh, trusted endpoints, if there are like a specific endpoints uh, that you wanna allow to come into your environment, you can specify that and then you, you can make sure that the devices that are coming in, uh, you, you, you can enforce that if they are not up to date or they're not, they're missing a software update, um, which fixes a lot of bugs. Um, you can specify all that from here. Um, you'll click on it. See, right now it says don't require, uh, don't require users to have app, but uh, you can specify that you want to make sure that the user has the Duo app. Uh, you, you And you can select things like block access if the firewall is off, firewall is off. So that's really getting granular into uh, making sure the devices that are coming into your environment are protected. Um, similarly, you, you can have uh, remember the devices or uh, operating system. If, if you can specify, like if a version is less than a specific version, uh, don't let them come in. And if, and if they're like end of life version, you can block them. Um, this is basically controlling the, the OS version to ensure that nothing's uh, outdated, outdated is coming into your environment, with, which has like potential vulnerabilities and someone could get into uh, these endpoints that are accessing your network or resources. And from there, it can just basically um, get into your environment and uh, attack, like launch attacks or whatever, right? You, you can specify the browsers. It gets really granular into it, right? So you, you, you can specify the browsers that are allowed to get in, uh, to what users are using to get into the environment, right? And blog, you know, here you can specify the Java versions. If there is a specific IP address that uh, uh, a range or network that you want uh, to allow just direct access, you can specify that. And there's a specific network that you say, okay, so these users can, oh, these are my trusted users, I can let them in, but these users from this network that are coming in, I, I wanna make sure that they, um, they go through the two-factor authentication process. And you, you, you can specify the authentication method, um, uh, specify things about do a mobile app, that you need to have like updates on it, and 
it can identify if the device has been tampered or not. So you can specify don't allow that device. Screen lock, if the device doesn't have screen lock on it, don't, don't, don't allow authentication for those. It makes sense, right? If, uh, so what it is doing is, um, yeah, let's just uh, biometrics. If you want to do like biometric, you can do that or um, however you want to do it here, right? So, so as you have seen, like how granular it has gotten, right? You're ensuring that users that are coming in are using a authentication method that is approved by you, like um, two factor, you're ensuring the location from there coming in, you're ensuring the devices that they have are up to date from a security posture, and so that when they access your your applications, you're safe there. So you, you're basically putting uh, protection over one layer over another to ensure the devices that are coming in are 100% safe to access and come in your environment, right? And similarly, if you if you look at uh, this is this is basically talking about users that are coming in, right? Um, Duo can also protect your applications, right? So what, what it means is, as you can see here, if you want to protect a specific application, um, uh, you can search for application here, click on protect application, and then you see a bunch of stuff here, right? So if I want to protect my VPN, uh, Firepower, um, yeah, so if I want to protect my VPN and I want to do um, a two-factor two authentication, um, so because it's already added, it wouldn't give me an option to click on protect here, but once you get there, um, the documentation itself is very uh, self-explanatory, where it kind of talks about how to integrate your um, your Duo with FTD, VPN, Firepower Deep VPN. So the users are trying to access that. They will have to go through the challenges um, that you set up here. And that's how you're securing the applications. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I mean, I think from a user and endpoint and application standpoint, it's basically covering everything for us, so which is great, right? So uh, let's just look into um, device insight here. As you can see here, um, you get an idea of things that are the devices, the operating systems that are coming in uh, in your environment and what, what's their status, right? Are they up to date, are they out of date, end of life? And then based on these, uh, this information you can take action on them right you you can say hey uh because i you know I, all the end of life i want to block access for these right and 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 things like that so the biggest thing is if you are if you if you don't have visibility into something you wouldn't be able to control it right and once you have visibility this is kind of going to level deep, next level into it, right? Now that I know that I've got Windows and Mac devices coming in, what do I do with them? First, I want to make sure that they are up to date, right? Because if they have some, oh, they're running some old software and they try to access internal resources and something, they could actually, uh, uh, you know, harm our environment because of how how the attackers can uh, take benefit of those out of date softwares and try to get into your network um, to, to steal data or, or do whatever, launch whatever attacks they want to do it. Um, here, let's just, uh, and just from an endpoint side, of like a end user perspective, um, there are a couple of demos here. Um, and you guys can also go to like, do a, a demo.duo.com. It's got a bunch of demos in there for you to kind of take a look and see what it, you know, how it works and how, what are the different use cases. So that, that's pretty awesome. Uh, so let's see if you're using a trusted device, uh, what happens then? Okay. So this is 
this is going to be a use case where uh, you're using a personal device, right? So yeah. how you differentiate it, right? So if you're you're accessing because everyone's working remote, you know, you're accessing your resources, but your company set up a policy that it says do not allow the non uh, corporate issued devices to come into the network. Uh, this is what, what you're going to see, right? The, the users are going to see that and you're going to click on see what is allowed. There it's saying corporate device required. Your administrator needs to allow corporate device uh, and so all that, right? And so I think that's, that's a great, great way of controlling what kind of devices would, uh, are coming into your environment, right? And then there's another, this, uh, another, uh, demo here. Let's just click on it. Uh, we're trying to access the Duo uh, SSL VPN connection. Put a username and password. Oops. It's not allowed because you do not have, app, uh, you know, you have out of date software. So from here, you can click on see what is allowed. And it, it's basically talking about like the browser that you're using is out of date. And because that's the case, I'm not going to let you in until you fix that. So in here, it's, it's basically giving you information about, uh, what's the latest version and, uh, your version is out of date. If you, when you click on see how to update, it's going to take you to the Firefox site so that you can upload, like upgrade your software and update your software. And once that's done, you're, you'll be able to get into your environment, right? So, yeah, I mean, uh, kind of going back to the, uh, the initial slide that we, we saw where we're trying to protect the access and identity of the users and which, which kind of ties into the workforce component of your zero trust strategy, right? So here using Duo, we're able to control uh, how users are accessing, what they are accessing, uh, the kind of devices that they are accessing, and making sure what's what is allowed is only uh, the right users are trying to get in. Uh, the right users are allowed to access the resources, and the applications are also protected with the controls that you put in to manage that. So that that's that speaks volumes to how if someone was saying, hey, I want to secure my workforce, and when we start talking about, hey, are you talking about securing the access or securing um, the identity or asset? So access and identity can be taken care of by Duo, right? So asset part um, and how and for endpoint or Cisco secure endpoint comes into play. We'll talk about it in the next video, but uh, I hope this was good for you guys. You guys had some, um, gave you some insight into how Duo helps uh, with the whole zero trust strategy. Um, thank you for watching. Stay, stay tuned for more. Thanks.